want to say welcome to our guests and friends today, both virtually and in person. God bless you. There are many churches that you passed on the way here that I am sure are great and wonderful, but you decided on First Christian, and for that we are thankful. I want to also acknowledge our ministers, guests that we have here. I am aware of two of them. Are there others? Amen. Amen. I would like to extend an invitation if your ministers, guests would like to join me in the pulpit, please feel free to. Um, I appreciate the support. Amen. Uh, a few more amens from the back is great for me. So please, if you would, if you would, please join me. If not, I totally understand how it feels to sit down and not be in the pulpit. <laughs> Amen. But that invitation is open. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I am so glad to have another chance to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a privilege. I was over the roads last week when Reverend Hill was here and shared, go, giddy up. Giddy up. I found myself on the road thinking, when are you going to tell us the word that you came with? <laughs> I'm just telling you what y'all thinking, okay? Y'all was thinking it. <laughs> but wasn't he wonderful? My children think I should preach more like him because it wasn't so long. <laughs> so I thought, okay, note taken. <laughs> Amen. Ambassador for Christ. Ambassador for Christ. We've been in a seven-week sermon series, uh, The Whole Armor of God. My prayer is that you have truly been able to pause and reflect and, and truly see yourself in this series. How important it has been to learn about every armor piece and how each one of them have their own respective places. One without the other is ineffective, amen? You need the whole armor of God. I've got scripture to back that up. It sounds like I'm just saying that myself, but that's what the word of God says, amen? It does. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Amen? Amen? And in the power of his might. Amen? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Doesn't say that just in case the devil comes. It says, no, be prepared because he's coming. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Amen? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Just help me tell your neighbor, say, you got to tell the truth. Oh, that's good. That's good. If no one's sitting next to you, just, tell you, just lay your right hand on your chest and say, tell the truth. Ah, tell the truth. Not only should I tell the truth, but I should believe the truth. Amen? I should subscribe to the truth. The truth is a good thing. Imagine having a soldier on the front line that doesn't know the truth. Imagine having someone protecting you that doesn't know the truth. Imagine having someone who's responsible for protecting your life that cannot discern, discern who's the enemy or who's not. 
They don't know the truth. That's dangerous. We gotta know the truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, this is being humble and being painfully aware that it is not your righteousness, it's His. It is the Lord's righteousness. Amen? And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Ask some of us, we've got the gospel of chaos. Oh, I can't hear you now, okay. <laughs> the gospel of peace. Amen? When they call on you, when they involve you, when they include you, can they count on you to be a voice of peace? Amen? Be prepared with the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which will... Which you will be able to quench the fiery darts from the wicked one. I like to tell it like this. Not only did he shoot a dart at me, he put a flame on it. The enemy is not trying to flirt with you. He is trying to demolish you. There is no space where we can entertain the enemy. We, we have to reject him. We have to resist him so that he will Flee. Come on, Bible readers, talk to me. Talk to me. I like it when the church talks back. Amen? amen. Tell your neighbor, say amen is a church word. You can say amen as much as you want to. Amen? Amen. amen. So that he will flee. Resist him. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. No matter where you go, you need the word. No matter how smart we get, we need the word. No matter how many scriptures we remember, we need the word. That word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. The word is necessary. Why? Not just for our own convictions in our own lives, but we've got to be an offensive soldier. The word is our defender. Amen? See, in the NBA, you have the defensive end and you have the offensive end. Somebody said, we've got that in the NFL. Stay with me. Stay with me. Let me do this. Amen? I'm talking about basketball. <laughs> Amen. Hey, you have a defensive end and you have your offensive side, right? Now, see, here's the thing. Some Players, most players can play both sides. But you have a stronger side, right? You have your point guard. Who's going to be on the offensive side, right? right. <laughs> Someone says, preach. Don't, don't ask me questions about basketball. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So you've got... You've got particular spots on this basketball team. you got the same in the kingdom. You've got people who are good at sweeping the floor. You've got good people who are good at preaching. You've got people who are good at doing slides and singing. You've got people who are good at playing the piano. That's what they're good at. But the goal of the game is to Amen. The goal is to win. The goal in here is to get souls saved, to make disciples. Amen? Amen? So no matter what part of the team you play on, do I have a help in here today? No matter what side of the team you play on, we're all making disciples. We're all trying to win. Amen? Some specialize on the defense, and some specialize on the offense. The Word of God says, <laughs> I need you to specialize in everything. <laughs> I need you to be ready to be on the defensive end if I need you. Be ready in season and out of season. He's got to be able to count on you when you don't feel good. Have I got a witness? He's got to be able to depend on you when you don't like the person you're sitting next to. Oh, you know, this is, this is life. 
<laughs> okay? All right? He's got to be able to use you when you don't agree with them. Can he commit to you? Can he trust you? Can he count on you? Even when you don't really like it. It says, take the helmet of salvation. Why in the world would we need a helmet of salvation? Because I can tell you this much. Let me think all alone by myself for too long and I'll wind up crazy by the end of the day. I need the Lord's mind. I need the righteous mind of Jesus Christ. Amen. I need the helmet of salvation to protect this mind. As smart as we are and wonderful as we are, we need him. God, protect my mind. He said, put on your helmet of salvation. That way, that when you walk into that workplace, the first thing that they say to you won't upset you like it usually does. Why? Because my mind is protected. Oh my, you, you can't just come up and push my buttons. I've taken access yeah. from you. Yeah. You can't just make me mad. That's my choice. <laughs> you can't just offend me. I can choose to be offended or not. Yeah. That's all within my ability. Amen? Yeah. I'm putting on my helmet of salvation. And then when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise a standard on the inside of me. And he gave us the sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. For those of us who feel lonely, the Bible says that he'll never leave you or forsake you. For those of us who need help, he said, look to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help come from the Lord. For those who feel condemned by your sin, John 3, 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through his son might be saved. He cares for you. He cares for you. For those of us who need to be comforted, he says in his word, I leave you not comfortless. I leave the comforter for you. For those of us who need wisdom, he says in his word, if a man asks for wisdom, have him to pray for wisdom. He'll give it to you. We've got Bible to back these things up. Use your sword. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me, that utterance may be given to me. This is Paul talking that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, an ambassador in chains. Ambassador, a person who acts as a representative or promoter of a specified activity ambassador, an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. An ambassador for Christ. An ambassador for Christ. Would that be you? Somebody said, yeah, pastor, I'll be an ambassador for Christ, but keep the chains, please. <laughs> Unfortunately, this world doesn't allow us to keep the chains. Sometimes we'll be chained. Sometimes we'll be counted out. Sometimes we'll be overlooked. But we've got to keep the main thing, the main thing side. We've got to keep being an ambassador for Christ, no matter what it looks like. Can Christ count on you to be bold for him? No matter the circumstance, can Christ count on you to be bold for him? I went and I visited my mother, and I just began to speak to her like I know she is. And I said, Mom, God 
still loves you. You know that, right? She said, yeah. And as her speech continues to come together, it's still kind of challenging to understand her and hear what she's saying, right? And so I wasn't sure if she was really receiving what it is I was telling her. But then I began to pray. And the Holy Spirit just came and filled that room. He came and filled that room. And my mother began to weep. And she began to raise that right hand and she began to speak to the Lord, and he heard her. He heard her. And she looked at that left leg, and I saw her lift that left leg just a little bit. She's fighting. She's fighting. And I said, Mama, remember all those times you weeped in church, and you cried, and you thanked God, and you jumped for joy, and you praised her. She said, yes, and she kept on lifting that right arm and praising God. God cares about his people. And see, I would tell people all the time, and I'll tell you today, praise him anyhow. There's not a scripture that can back this up. So understand, this is Anthonyology, but I've got experience in this thing. And it, it, it happens. I believe when, when there's no cloud on the horizon, when things are just peachy, I mean, things are great, and you still praise him, and you still give him what he deserves, I believe that God remembers those things. I, I believe that God acknowledges the fact that nothing's going wrong in your life, but you still praise me anyhow. When the time comes, if it may, God forbid, but a time may come where you can't lift up your left hand like you used to. You can't say thank you, Jesus, like you used to. He'll go back and remember in 2022 where you praised him anyhow. And I just believe God will pour out a blessing. I've watched him do it. And I believe he's doing that with my mother. She is an ambassador for Christ. Can you still praise God in your hour of frustration, weakness? Can you still praise God when they've turned their backs on you? where they've embarrassed you. Can, can you. can you still praise God when they try to take you out? Can you still be his ambassador? Can I tell you the secret? Putting on your whole armor, it'll help you. See, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You know that scripture? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. The scripture didn't say that it wouldn't be formed. It, it didn't say that they won't try. They said it won't work. It says it won't work, but it did not say that it won't be tried. It didn't say that they won't try to take you out. He said that it won't work. God, I thank you because it didn't work. God, I'm thankful that it didn't work. And I tell the enemy, you should have took me out when you had the chance. But now that I've got my mind made up, you can't, I feel like MC Hammer, you can't touch this. You moved too slow. You should have took me when you had a chance. It's too late now. It won't work. So you've got a chance to spread your wings and fly above the things that used to stump all over you. You're an ambassador for Christ. You've got clearance. You can walk anywhere you want to walk and proclaim the name of Jesus and angels will move things out of the way. You are an ambassador ambassador for Christ, just like the United States ambassadors that go in the other countries. There are provisions set up for them. There are precautions and safety measures exhausted to protect them. You've got it in Christ Jesus. You've got that. 
I mean, he will supernaturally align things for you. You ever been traveling out of town and something goes way wrong, but God sends an angel and it's like, who are these people? How did this happen? God, you are good. Imagine that happening going overseas. But even in that, God has you in his hand. As long as you keep Christ the main thing. If you are an ambassador for Christ, would you stand, please? Lord, I am your ambassador. You repeat it if you want to. You don't have to. Lord, I am your ambassador. Use me up. Use me as you see fit. <laughs> I'm willing, God. I'm ready, God. I can close my mouth when you tell me to. And I can open my mouth when you tell me to. I can stand. I can sit. I can walk. I can run. If you have me to do it, God. I'll do it for you. You can count on me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing coming your way can stop you because you're an ambassador for Christ. God bless you. Keep the main thing, the main thing. There's no conversation too big for you. There's, no, there's nothing too big, too hard, too large, too wide. None of that. Because you belong to Christ. He's got you in his hand. So that big mountain that you see, that you're scared of, you're fretting, going up against, I dare you to try it. I, da I dare you to try it. I am trusting God in this very moment for a miracle, for my family and my mother. Can I be transparent and honest with you? I'm, I am trying to buy a house because I'm preparing for my mother to come home to a comfortable space where I can take care of her. I've got some challenges, I've got some hurdles, but nothing is too big. I wish I, I wish I had somebody in here that would say amen with me. Nothing is too big for the God that I serve. I'm a witness. He's done it before. He can do it if he can split a sea and have his, oh my, 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 my. If he can split a whole sea and have his children walk on dry land, he can do it for me. If he can raise Lazarus from the dead, he can do it for me. Has he done it for you? Has he done it for you? He can do it for me. God bless you. Amen.